In this lesson, we will examine the supplemental oxygen systems provided for passengers and cabin crew. The regulations governing the use of supplemental oxygen throughout the aeroplane are covered in the Flight Deck Supplemental Oxygen lesson. The supply of supplemental oxygen to the passengers and cabin attendants is of the continuous flow type. That is to say that once the flow to a mask is initiated, it will continue whether someone is breathing the oxygen or not. On some smaller aircraft, the flight deck also has a continuous flow type of system. The cabin crew and passengers can be supplied by either a high pressure gaseous system or a chemical generator system. The oxygen masks for the cabin crew and passengers are stowed in the passenger service units above the passengers' heads. This picture is looking down on the top of a typical passenger service unit. The doors of the units are opened automatically by a barometrically controlled release mechanism if the cabin altitude reaches 14,000 feet or by manual selection by the flight crew at any altitude. There are two methods of automatic door actuation in use. In the gaseous system, they are opened pneumatically by the oxygen pressure. But if the system uses chemical generators, the doors are opened by electrical solenoids. When the passenger service unit doors open, the masks drop to the half-hung position. That is to say, they are now hanging by their initiation cords. Pulling the mask towards the face pulls the cord, which initiates the oxygen flow by opening a check valve in the gas supply system or operating the electrical or percussion cap firing mechanism on the chemical generator. The regulations require that for aeroplanes intended to be operated above 25,000 feet, the number of masks must exceed the number of cabin seats available by 10%, with the extra masks spread evenly throughout the cabin. This allows passengers and cabin crew not in their seating positions to quickly find a spare mask. In the picture shown, there are only three seats below the passenger service unit, but there are four masks stowed in the unit. The oxygen enters the mask through a plastic rebreather bag, where it is mixed with exhaled air and cabin air. Because of this mixing with cabin air, passenger oxygen masks don't give protection from noxious fumes. A passenger high-pressure gaseous oxygen supply system is very similar in design to the crew system. except that the demand regulators are replaced by mask connection points with valves operated by the mask cords. There is also a flow control valve in the system which can be opened automatically by a barometric switch when the cabin altitude exceeds 14,000 feet or manually by operation of a flight deck switch. Chemical oxygen generators, which are used on most modern aircraft, are relatively light and inexpensive self-contained devices, which require virtually no maintenance. In a system using chemical oxygen generation, the generators are located in each passenger, cabin crew and lavatory service unit. Each generator can supply two, three or four passenger oxygen masks. Here is a cross-section of a typical aviation chemical oxygen generator. Inside a cylindrical case is a charge block made up of a mixture of sodium chlorate and iron powder. This is surrounded by a filter material and thermal insulation. In the older chemical oxygen generator units, as the mask is pulled down, a cord attached to the mask operates a percussion cap in the firing mechanism, igniting the charge block. In more modern systems, when the mask is pulled down, 
The cord operates an electrical switch, which fires a 28 volt DC squib to begin the ignition process. When ignited, the charge block will burn at a temperature of approximately 200 degrees Celsius and will burn for a minimum of 15 minutes, releasing about 45% of its weight as usable oxygen through the oxygen outlets. The sodium chlorate and iron core is shaped to provide maximum oxygen flow initially. This will be when the cabin altitude is highest and the maximum oxygen is required. This table shows the relationship between the amount of passenger oxygen required in an emergency descent compared to the capacity of a typical oxygen generator. You can see that the oxygen output is always slightly greater than the amount required. A filter in the generator removes any contaminants and cools the oxygen to a temperature not exceeding 10 degrees Celsius above cabin ambient temperature. A relief valve prevents the internal pressure in the generator exceeding 50 psi. The normal flow pressure is 10 psi. Chemical oxygen generators need to be treated with caution. The chemical reaction generates a lot of heat. The case of the generator becomes very hot. Once the chemical reaction has started, it cannot be stopped. A strip of heat sensitive tape or paint on the case changes colour, in this case from orange to black, when the generator is used, and provides a visual indication that the generator needs to be replaced. That is the end of the lesson. Here is a summary of the main points. Cabin crew and passenger supplemental oxygen systems can be gaseous or they may use chemical oxygen generators. Chemical oxygen generators are usually used because they are inexpensive, light and are almost maintenance free. In the event of a depressurization, when the cabin altitude exceeds 14,000 feet, oxygen masks will automatically be presented to the cabin crew and passengers. The passenger oxygen masks can be deployed at any time by operation of a switch on the flight deck. The flow of oxygen to a mask is normally initiated by pulling the mask towards the face. A mixture of oxygen and cabin air is breathed in through a passenger mask.